Hi everyone. Today we're going to read chapter six of Star. I love this cover. It's by Britta Teckentrup and the illustrations are by Joanne Davies. So this is the illustration at the start of chapter six. And you can see Anushka is there um, running along the railway line because she's just seen that Star, the tiger cub, is, um, is stuck on the railway line. Anushka let out a yelp of panic. The tiger cub was slumped on the line between her and the train. She dashed along the track, her boots skidding and clattering on the icy sleepers, and flung herself down beside the tiger. What are you doing? she wailed. Get up! You can't stay here. Look! The train was still quite a long way away, but it was approaching fast. Anushka reckoned she had less than a minute to get the tiger cub off the line. Are you hurt? she muttered, pointing the torch at the cub. Or perhaps you're stuck. Have you got a paw stuck or something? But all four paws seemed fine. The cub was just lying on the track, looking exhausted. As Anushka watched, the tiger's eyes closed again and her head sank down on her front paws. You have to move! Come on! she pleaded. The tiger had been so fierce and strong, facing off against the bear for her. How could she be so feeble now? Couldn't she feel the shiver of the metal underneath her? Didn't she know how much danger she was in? The cubs used up the last of her strength, Anushka realised. She gave it all up to fight for me. No, Anushka said grimly. She stuffed the torch into her pocket. She didn't need it. The lights of the oncoming train were casting an eerie white glow all around them now. Very soon... The driver would see her and the tiger, but Anushka wasn't sure he'd be able to stop, even if he wanted to. The train was speeding towards them too fast. She sucked in a breath, the freezing air stabbing at her throat. Then she wrapped her arms round the tiger's great chest and heaved. Nothing happened. Even though the tiger was only a cub, she was too big and heavy for Anushka to shift her. Just help me a little bit, she pleaded. I came out here to save you. I'm not going to leave you here. I can't. The tiger's eyes slitted open and she looked up tiredly at Anushka. Then the black tips of her ears twitched and she shook her head. Finally, she'd sensed the danger she was in, Anushka thought. The tiger tried to pull herself up, her front legs shaking, but then she collapsed down again. Anushka bit her lip. The train was so close now she could feel the shuddering of the rails all through her. Her fingers were actually trembling. But she scrambled up and dashed round to the other side of the tiger, crouching again to shove her from behind. Come on, she screamed, her voice lost in the thunder of the oncoming train. Get up! There was a mighty shriek as the train driver caught sight of them on the tracks and sounded his whistle, as if they might not have noticed that there was a train bearing down on them. But the blast of noise seemed to give the tiger the burst of energy she needed, and she scrambled up onto her feet with Anushka pushing behind her. They lurched off the line in a stumbling rush and flung themselves clear. Anushka collapsed into the snow piled at side of the tracks, her face pressed into the hot fur of the tiger's side. She lay there watching as the train went past, as high as a house, wheels howling against the metal rails. It seemed to go on forever, so loud that Anushka trembled all over, sure that the very sound would shake her apart. She stared up at the quiet stars above them, holding on to their stillness in the thundering noise. But what about the tiger? Anushka blinked and shook her head and forced herself to look back down. The cub was stretched in the snow beside her, her sides heaving. The lights from the train were flickering in her eyes, even brighter than the starlight. It'll be gone soon, Anushka gasped, or thought she did. She couldn't hear her own words. It'll go, Shveshtamoya, I promise. She laughed weakly. Little star. That was what Baba called her. And Papa and Mama. She blinked, confused for a moment. It was funny to say it to a tiger. Star? she murmured to the cub again, as the last carriages rattled past, leaving a trembling silence in the snow. 
She sat up slowly, expecting the tiger to dart away into the trees now that the train had gone. But Star lay still, gazing back at Anushka, her golden eyes bewildered. She wasn't leaping up and dashing away like a wild tiger should. What is it? Anushka asked. Are you too tired to run? Or perhaps the cub was just too scared to move, she thought worriedly. The train had been terrifying enough for her, and she knew what it was. To a tiger, it must seem like a great metal monster tearing through the forest. She pulled the torch out of her pocket and shone it over the tiger, searching for wounds. It was hard to tell with such thick fur, but she couldn't see any blood. But the tiger cub's tail didn't look right, she realised, peering at it with a frown. Instead of orange fur banded neatly with black and a black tail tip, the whole end of Star's tail was dark. That's frostbite, Anushka said, flinching a little. She remembered her grandfather showing her the stumps of his toes after she'd begged and begged, and how she'd then had nightmares for ages afterwards about her fingers falling off. Star must have been so weak for her tail to freeze. Anushka shivered, imagining her collapsed in the snow, getting colder and colder. You gave up and lay down, she murmured, like I nearly did. We've got to get you some help. You need a vet. She sighed. It was silly talking to a tiger, as if she could understand. But then this whole night was starting to feel like a dream. She put one gloved hand on Star's fat front paw, and the cubs sniffed at her feebly. If you come back to the village with me, Anushka explained, I could take you to Dimitri. I bet he'd know what to do about your tail. She glanced at the cub's tail again, dark and dead against the snow. A frostbitten tail wasn't going to get better. She suspected that Dimitri would know exactly what to do with it, but she wasn't going to mention that to Star, just in case the tiger cub did understand her. Dimitri will sort your tail out, and then the people from the nature reserve will come and fetch you. It'll be lovely there, like a, like a tiger home. But you're going to have to get up, she said encouragingly. I know you can. You managed it before when the train was coming. But that had been because Star was scared. Anushka didn't want to frighten her into moving. She didn't know how to frighten a tiger anyway. This isn't going to work, she muttered wearily. Maybe I should leave you here and walk back to the village on my own. Anushka chewed her lip. Star wasn't moving now, but perhaps when she'd recovered from the shock of the train, she'd wander off again. It was no good going and telling everybody she'd found a tiger if there was no tiger when they all came to find her. You have to come with me. Then she sat up, patting frantically at her pockets. Papa's piroshki! They're chicken and mushroom. I bet you'd love them. Anushka pulled out the foil packet and started to fumble at it with her gloves. Her nose was too cold to smell the little chicken pies as she opened up the foil, but the tiger's whiskers twitched. Anushka tore off a piece of pastry and felt her stomach twist. She was hungry now too, but not nearly as hungry as Star. She wondered when the little tiger had last eaten. Had she managed to hunt at all since her mother had been killed? Or did she still not know how to? If she'd been desperate enough to come scavenging around the village so close to humans, it was likely she'd just been eating the scraps of other creatures' kills, anything she could find. But whatever she'd been doing, she clearly had not been eating enough. Under her thick fur, the cub was skin and bone. Look, take this, Anushka said holding out the piece of pastry. She tried not to flinch as Star reached for the tasty morsel and the cub's yellow-white teeth flashed in the torchlight. Even a small tiger had very big fangs either side of its jaw. But Star mouthed the pie out of Anushka's hand delicately, swiping the crumbs from the girl's glove with her huge pink tongue. Would you like some more? Anushka asked, reaching for another piece. The tiger heaved herself forward just a little, as though she was trying to rock back onto her paws and get up. She didn't quite manage it. Anushka clicked her tongue sympathetically and fed the cub the second piece of piroshki. Then she held the foil packet in front of Star's nose. Look, there's lots more. Come on. This time, the tiger wriggled over so she was almost sitting up and pawed at the packet. Anushka giggled. You see? You want them, don't you? Come on. 
She shimmied back a bit, waving the pies temptingly. The cub let out a frustrated little growl, almost a mew, and surged up onto her paws, lunging after Anushka and the broshki. Anushka skipped away, hurriedly tearing off another bit of pie as a reward. That's it, come on, Star! The tiger stumbled after her, staring hopefully at the food, and Anushka started to feel as though her plan might work. The cub still looked tired and sick, but she was stomping along after those piroshki with an air of grim determination. I wish I could feed you the whole packet all at once, she murmured, waving a chunk of pie temptingly at Star. But I've got to make it last. I don't know how far it is back to the village, or to somewhere they can call home for me. And I'm not sure how anyone's going to feel when I turn up at their house with a tiger asking to use the phone. Star nipped the next bit of piroshki out of Anushka's hand and nudged at her gratefully. She was starting to look a bit more lively, which was good, but even that little nudge reminded Anushka how strong the tiger was. If she began to feel a lot better, Star could just knock her over and take the whole packet of little pies. There wasn't going to be any more of this nonsense about giving them out gradually. Anushka moved a few steps ahead of Star and held up the piroshki a little higher. But the cub closed the gap at once and poured hopefully at the packet, her claws raking the foil. If she stood on her hind legs, she would be as tall as Anushka. OK, OK, Anushka sighed. Here you go. I'm just glad Papa packed up lots last night. But once they're gone, they're gone. She handed Star a bigger bit of pie, and the cub snapped it greedily out of her hand. But when she landed again, whipping her tail eagerly, Anushka noticed her wince. The tiger looked back over her shoulder to glance at her blackened tail tip, as though it was hurting. Anushka hoped that was a good sign. Her grandfather had explained how frostbite worked when she was so upset about his toes. If Star's tail was painful, it meant it still had some feeling in it. There was still blood flowing and the nerves were working. Maybe they were going to be in time to save it. She nodded to herself, feeling more determined. The dazed, sleepy feeling that had been so frightening was almost gone. The excitement of finding Star and the terror of the oncoming train had given her a new energy to fight the cold. She couldn't let the little cub down, but they had to make it back to the village before Star collapsed again, or Anushka did. Thanks for listening, everyone. I'll read the next chapter again soon. Bye!